Ladies and gentlemen, that was next too close. You really, really, really have to value uh, the friends that you have made and the family, whatever is going on with you. You literally never know when it's going to be over. And uh, I, I know that I have to get better at letting things go and just being close and loving each other as long as you can. Uh, case in point, uh, I grew up in Los Angeles and uh, listen to radio in Los Angeles. And back in the day, when I grew up, radio was everything. It was the way you saw everything. It was oftentimes the first thing you heard about. It was our communal place that we gathered to find out. We didn't have social media. We had jocks on the radio who, who gave us a, a window into a world that some of us would have never gotten to see. I mean, some of the things I, kn I know now and have learned have been directly connected to the experiences that I heard people talking about on radio. Case in point, um, uh, Cliff Winston, who uh, was on a uh, morning show on KJLH, uh, which Stevie Wonder owned. It's interesting because that's where I started my radio career. I was Cliff, uh, the Body Winston's morning man, oh, wow. and uh, for for a couple of years. And it was the first entree in the radio. And I got to sit where you sit. And every time I would start to go off or be funny, Cliff would turn my microphone off. He would always do it. And uh, he said, "Whatever you got to say, say it fast and get back to me." Whatever you got to say, say it fast and get back to me. It's the radio station I got fired because I, I, I used to always talk bad about the station because Stevie Wonder owned it. And I said, well, this place looked as bad as Stevie Wonder could see. And 45 minutes later, Stevie came down and fired me. And then Cliff hired me again and Stevie hired me again. Um, but uh, the other day I was out to dinner and I saw a cat named Jeff Gill. And I asked him about Cliff because everything I am now in radio, I learned from him. Like he was a consummate jock. He was really a, a, a great human being. And, he, and he, he didn't have to, because I was nothing. You know, I was nothing. I was just some skinny dude who just used to talk stuff on the radio. Nobody knew who I was, but he gave me a gig and used to teach me the tools of the trade. And uh, I didn't always apply them. But uh, so I'm talking to Jeff Gill, and I asked him about Cliff. And we used to talk about how he used to cut my microphone on. And I asked him what he was doing. This morning, I'm prepping for the very radio show that I, you know, I don't know that I've had had I not had him in my life. And I, 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 I go to, uh, to the uh, media, and I see that he died. So Cliff the Body Winston has passed on. And it's ironic that I would find out that he passed doing the very thing that he prepared me for so many years ago. Uh, and so I am sorry that he passed. But I think when people like that come into people's lives, you never really go because you pass so much out. He was a gentleman. He was a pro. He illustrated a picture of me, uh, pictures for me in Los Angeles that I don't know what I, that I'd ever had before. And I'm genuinely sorry that, that we lost him. And I think it's amazing that I would think about him and then um, learn of his demise while I was doing the thing that I started doing with him. So you never know. Well, Cliff, I miss you. Uh, I am sorry that you're gone. And uh, I guess Kia turned my microphone off. <laughs> that's, that's what Cliff would have wanted. That's a little note from the GED section. Rest in peace, Cliff the Body Winston. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.